I'm Luke. I'm Reese. We've been making a documentary about the effects of the internet on the local music scene. And how it's changed, how music's uh, distributed online, how people hear the music and how the scene holds up with the internet now. You know, can, you know everyone, you can find what music you want. Okay. First of all, we've got an interview with Quartz, a local independent band from Basil and Pitt, Seasaf and surrounding. We included them to give an insight on their views of how the industry's changed with the help of the internet, uh, how how they distribute music if they have trouble not being signed and how it's just changed from back then to now and how they've sort of in the internet age how they've grown up in it and I think they have a really interesting sound that if they were going through uh, the old way of becoming well well known and becoming a musician up and coming yeah that they would have been very successful and that they'd be like thought of well but I think it's interesting to see how they're going to survive inside their new way of producing and releasing music Here's the interview. We're caught to a band from uh, Basel and Essex. That's about it. Well, that's about it. That's yeah. Is it? He's from Canby. Yeah. Well, did say that. Yeah. <laughs> In Brent. How long have you guys been together? Uh, how long have we been together? Four years. No, not four years. Yeah, we did Sirens. It's been about four years, isn't it? Joseph's like, oh no. Three about years. Three years. What inspired me? Mm. Which is what I like doing. That's about it. I want to do it for a living, don't want to work. I can't, you know, I can't remember a time I didn't really want to do music. I've always wanted to. Mm. That is it. Link. Well, <laughs> funny thing is, I was inspired by my brothers to play music in a band. Oh, that's nice. Me. Yeah, him. Me. Yeah. What about Reese? Yeah, Reese as well. Did yeah, they say brothers? You said brothers, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why. As a band, what artist do you think has shaped you and influ influenced you the most? Oh, that is oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know, I think we all like individual things, mm -hmm. but then we all like the same music as well. Like we all just like lots of varied music. I think initially though, you've got to admit it was far Yeah, definitely. I actually don't want to say it was. Because that's our biggest comparison, because people are lazy and that's the only band that they like to compare us to. Oh, just saying. But, yeah, probably not anymore. No, not it anymore. definitely was about two years ago. Mm -hmm. No, it's probably not. Like, just more hip hop, funky, chill the funk. funky jazz, yeah, jazz, mm. jazz funk, shit like that. Sounds as gay, but that's true, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think the key is to being heard and recognised? Being individual. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's the best answer. Though. Do you it's think that unique. is appealing to a wide audience or finding your own sound? Like you said, being individual, then, yeah. What is it? Yeah. What's the question? It was basically, what is the key to being heard? Do you think it's having your own sound and being like, in, you know, individual or fitting in with a crowd to an appeal to a wide audience? Definitely. Individual. I think it depends. What, yeah, it depends. If you want to be a gimmicky band, like, a gimmick and just and you're gonna last five minutes, then yeah, that's good. But if you want to last, then you've got to be unique and you've got to have your own thing going. <laughs> It's classic. I think it'd be more powerful than ever. It's good. Do you still think it's relevant to being signed to a big label? What's what is it? Do you think it's relevant to be signed to a big label, or do you think you can do it independently? Like you can do it independently, it but it's tough the because of money. It's always down to money. I think. Like, it depends where you live as well. I think. <laughs> Definitely. I know it is the internet, but still, it's still local and scenes as well. Like obviously, there's a scene in your area, but not really one in Basel, is there? Nothing or Essex, or Essex at all <laughs> really. Not unless you're into, not band, unless really you're into really. metal or DJs, then. But for that sort of thing, there's nothing going on. Yeah. <laughs> don't know what 
what else is there to say. That's it. Uh, survival. How have you found surviving as an independent band? Has there been times where you just wanted to quit a day because of money and effort? Every definitely. Day. Every day. Definitely. That until recently, but yeah, no. Def definitely. Like for the women's in the EP, it took us like five months. And it was just like, fuck this. We just couldn't be bothered to do it anymore because it was just long. But then we got it out and then it's been good since. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't felt like that in a while. But you did when, get you, that. when you like put so much work in and you're living with like no money and you're just thinking, wow, well, I'm just going to get a job. I'm like, oh, being a bum trying to put the guitars mm. down and grow you up. Think, yeah, grow up. When you've been doing it since you was like 12 years old, you think, oh dear. Yeah, sort your life out. Get off the dial. <laughs> Just for the viewers, can you clarify what your genre actually is? Like no. what you find? No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying. It no, sounds knobby, so I'm leaving it to the listen listeners. And that. It's but not like uh, it's completely different because it's not at all. But I don't know. Alternative funk hop. Funk hop. Don't. <laughs> <Yeah. Never laughs> we're not going to try and make our own genre. We're not knobs. Yeah, like Grindy. Grindy. Yeah. What was that? Um, no, what was that? Funk? I heard one yesterday. Like Grindy. Grindy. Uh, what genre? Uh, what was it? Something Wait. really weird, like Black Trip. Hot metal or something like that on Radio One. We're That's what we we're are. progressive we're jazz. Hot metal. No, we're progressive. Black trip hot metal. Hot, <laughs> what is that genre? Like? It's grindy, isn't it? It's just cool. alternative, isn't it? Grindy. It would have been indie, but now indie's just like reminds me of the Cooks and things like that. The Cooks. The Cooks. Leave that. Leave that. They haven't been around that long. I don't even remember their name anymore. Like Razor Light and all shit like that. Yeah, yeah that's that's indie in my head. Yeah. The Cooks and. Uh, Razor, Razor Light. Razor Light! Oh, Razor, oh yeah. Resolute. Is that Johnny, Johnny Borrell? Bob mm. <laughs> Bovril. Johnny Bovril. Johnny Bovril. Um, yeah. No, that's, it's good that you, I'd be interested to see, like, you think indie's lost its way then, it's not really... It's dead really, isn't yeah. it? It's the, the word of indie is meaningless now, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it used to mean like independent record label, but, but, but now it's just like... Brit rock. Like, People using it as cubes to dress know, as indie. Stupid, stupid term, isn't it? It doesn't mean anything. People use it as the Amy dressing room. Amy and Amy and Amy and Indy. Yeah. Amy and Amy and Indy. That video is classic. That's, that's when you know Indy. That sums it up. That sums it up. That video. Yeah. Right there. Would you say that's an influence to your music, that video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. And the enemy is definitely the bi <laughs> Indy Bible video. Yeah. And it's cool to... It's cool to be in. What, she, what does she do in the she video? Cuts. She wears vintage clothes. You got to wear. You got to wear clothes that your grandparents would wear. Yeah. Right. You got to read and the enemy. You got to wear really tight skinny jeans. Drink or you can't tiny. listen to our music. <sighs> just, just basically describing what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not a prat, are you? So you're alright. Well, we have to debate sometimes. Um, but yeah, indeed, it's lost its meaning. It's rubbish. Next question. What else you got? How, do you think? Do you reckon there's any point in the future where you, you like, you, if you hit that point, you know you've made it, like as a? No, no I don't think you ever get to, will get to that point unless you're fucking like, playing Wembley like Coldplay or some shit. Yeah, you're you'll be like shit. This is big, but I don't think. I don't know. Like, I suppose for us making it would be like just being able to get a couple of hundred pound a week each, being on tour, having a good time every night, making music, and not having to do anything else. That's when we'd be like, yeah, we've made it. But because just got nothing really at the moment. No. Nothing going for us. But as long as we get to that stage, like, just going to have to play loads of gigs all over the country, like, even in maybe Europe or, well, yeah, definitely Europe. And if we get any further than that, then... That's true, though, isn't it? Well, no, but I'm Japan. saying, like, all, all of Europe, and just 
making music all the time, getting paid to do it. And then that's, hey, we'll just be a wedding band if this fails. Yeah, that's our plan. If this yeah. fails, we're gonna just get just sick, out, like, sick of our instruments. Do court this? Do and covers? Just be sessions. a wedding band, yeah. yeah. Start a new band, not courts anymore. Don't wanna tarnish that. The artist small really reputation knows, that we've got. We'll just be saying really ch cheesy. Like chick flick the band. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rob Fing's band, isn't it? That band does exist. That does actually exist, I don't know. The Cooks. To be fair, the Cooks. <laughs> Uh, they, there we had courts. Um, as I said in the interview, sometimes they f they feel like giving up because without the without the support of the scene, the small scene that we've got, and we've, obviously without the internet, I, I imagine they wouldn't even continue making music. Mm. But I, they're slowly gaining more recognition and things. And sometimes they, they they said sometimes they just can't be bothered anymore. But they've got to keep at it. Well, yeah, they got those fans in Peru that they've got to keep making sure that happy. <laughs> the fans in Peru. Yeah, which I think is an interesting point. Is the idea that if, although you might not be receiving the what like the thanks that you want from the local area, you still get it from online. Yeah. So although your music might not be what's wanted in Pitsy, it we wanted in other parts of the country, yeah. other parts of the world. Yeah. Because well, they've got a great sound that I think can really do quite well for. Them. The interview with Anthony Shores was different, to say the least, from the way courts operate. Well, generally, it, they mentioned in the interview that they they were inspired to form the band when they saw courts live when they were called Sirens a while back. Um, I think really they're doing it for the passion, like they said. They're not really doing it to break the industry. They're doing it to support the scene and sort of as a pastime for what they love. Uh, obviously, in a similar vein, uh, of course, they are independent and they distribute their music online, but they still have the scene supporting them, the very lack of the scene. Mm. Um, yeah. What do we think of our surroundings? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, go again, I've got this down. What, what am I answering this, or...? What do we think of our surroundings and the music scene that's around us? <laughs> <laughs> Local music I love scene. Pitsy. Like, really love Pitsy. Yeah. It's, it's like... We hate it. We hate it, but we love it. Yeah. There's no place like it. It's like a little village full of shit, basically, shit. innit? But it's a... It's a good village. How would you survive in Pitsy without music? <laughs> well, we'd probably turn to like mum and dad and be like, we're gonna kill ourselves. <laughs> help, help us out, mum and dad. <laughs> Send me out this time and I'll feel it go. Who would hear our music apart from ourselves? Mum and Dad. Mum and Dad, yeah, there's always them. Sue and Barry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big metal scene going on. Do you think it's going against what you want? Like, by a big metal scene, I mean, uh, Chinnery's is always playing metal and just metal. Yeah. Yeah, always and like it's Pansy Hardcore. It's a big uh, scene as well, something metal. But yeah, it's kind of merging together to make a big sort of movement. Big group. Yeah, a big group scene of... around Southend. All you know is taking a side. I see it now And that was the last thing I saw All these things 
I remember my first trip to Chinneries and uh, we went to see Sirens and I was quite taken by that, like, it was quite cool. And then uh, ever since then, it just kind of, uh, we kind of decided that we wanted to be in a band kind of thing. And then, uh, then we made a band. And what's the house extraordinary things? Uh, well, we just want to release our EP, really, like the yeah. one we're working on. Yeah. Start yeah. gigging, play the new set, like, then hopefully things will like move on from there, won't they? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um, caught some some fans in Peru? Do you have any sort of international? No. Does that, like is there some random kid from Argentina that digs your shit? We've got a little Filipino fan. Yeah. How is she? Full with him. Nearly all modern bands, right? They don't charge for their first few EPs. When do you think it's like right to start charging for your music? I don't think we'll ever charge. It just feels wrong, doesn't it, really? Wouldn't there ever be a time Well, when... unless we get signed or something, then we'll have to charge. But other than that, like... But I'm saying, we... so, if, so if you're quite a fan base for online, so if you've got like 10,000 fans suddenly, you work out with 10,000 fans, and you wanted to make an album, but obviously you needed to raise money to do it, would you charge for it then or something? Yeah, or would you, you see... Like, yeah, it depends on the circumstance though, doesn't it, really? Like... Consider it. Because at the moment, it's just something that we do because we love it. Like, we don't plan on, like... Go, we don't even care if we go far with it, do we? We just mm. do it because we love it and we love going to practice every week and just, like, doing something that we're passionate about. Like... But, obviously, if it comes to a point where we have to, like, charge for it, then we will, won't we? But... Hopefully not. Cool. Do you think internet piracy is right? Do you think it's alright to steal like an album from yeah. Yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't get it's around hard, as much, would it? It's hard to get the music that you want without piracy. You wouldn't really be able to listen to what you want to listen to. And that, that ties in with the internet, doesn't it? Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I thought of. How, what do you think of, you know, say if you wanted to get an album that was... You know, you're going to HMV, you can't find that album, can you? Yeah, exactly. It's a lot easier to find, discover music that you like. Cool. To just like, so you think it's easy to just download like the discography, yeah, it's what you like, and then you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna see yeah. them live, but you won't go and buy the CD or something. Yeah, it's easier, it's cheaper, like, because yeah. it gets around a lot quicker that way. We got the thing about Screwless Pip, didn't he? Uh, yeah, what well, was he put his album on Pirate Bay and was like did a fake one like hello. Like, he starts to, he does like one minute of it and then goes like oh, I can't be fucking bothered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stop nicking my album or something. <laughs> Uh, the way I see it, you, I think it's cool, Paris, isn't it? You download yeah. it, and then if you really like the album, you'll buy it, but I'd rather go see the band and buy their T-shirts and shit, and that's how I'd give them money. But yeah, I'm exactly, see them. exactly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not undermining that. I wouldn't pay for their music. It's more really? a chance yeah. to go and see them than buying one of their T-shirts.
interesting about that they don't feel that they need to be paid for what they do is like something that interests me. Is it? I think with the passion they have, they genuinely would just be happy with people finding their music online and people just hearing their music. Um, obviously, like with Courts, they said they they enjoy the music, they obviously have the passion there, but it feels like all the hardship they're putting into their work, they would like some sort of payoff, even if it would be support. You know, people don't need to buy the music, just some more you know, support mm. as they're getting more recognition. But ideally, I think, in, I think the industry will sort of minimise a fair amount within the next 10, 15 years and it will be almost irrelevant with the internet. You have artists like The Weeknd, um, come out last year, released three mixtapes completely free. I think he has about 300,000 Facebook friend, fans now. Mm. Went huge, hype trained, viral, you know, just through that. Yeah. Generally, with online, people can search for what they want. Well, there's so many different people that you can, like, appeal to because, say, if you had th you'd have three people in your local area you can go up to 30,000 people if you just include the country. <laughs> Obviously, with with the contrast of the internet and how you can be discovered now, we have a interview with Vic Collins, guitarist from the Curse of Flies, and your, and that's, yeah. your guitar teacher. And he's from way back, they hit it big in 73, 74 with their one hit wonder. But they did have some other hits to go with it, and they are actually a great band that I thought had some real, you know, Changed them. Generally, they got uh, they got recognised from touring, didn't they, and being supported by the scene, Doctor Doctor. Yeah, they Dr. they Fieldwood. were friends with Doctor Fieldwood, and uh, when Doctor Fieldwood started to play it big, so did they, yeah. and so they would play in all the local gigs, and that's how they grew their reputation. So they are the the complete opposite of what we expect from internet bands nowadays. Like your yeah. your gigs are great, but it's all about how you perceive yourself online. They developed it all from just going, yeah, they put on a really good show. Yeah. Well, in contrast to the two young bands we interviewed, here's um, Vic Collins' interview with some really good insights to how the, it's all changed over the years. Goes on about the 60s music being all great and really diverse and whatever, you know, and so many things happening. And half the reason for that was the um, pirate radio stations. Mm. Because before you had Radio 1 and that sort of thing and everything became tight again and sort of um, things became very controlled by the radio stations and the record companies, um, you had the pirate radio stations. You send them a recording of, oh, this is my band, you know, can you play it? And they play it. It was as simple as that. Oh, we play this one, this one's a new one, hey, you know, stick it on. And people made up their own mind whether they liked it or not. As soon as that was why there was a big diverse thing with music mm. in the 60s, when, the, when, when those pirate radio stations were about. Then, once late 60s into the 70s, the early 70s, when the... Um, Control was back with the record companies and the radio stations, the official radio stations. It all started getting very, very narrow again, you know, and you had a job to break through. With the internet, that has opened it all up again because people, people, that that word spreads, you know. I mean, look at the um, what do you call them, um, Arctic Monkeys. That was all spread through the internet, you know, which is brilliant. It's it's great. It's what music should be. It should be. It should be open and people should be able to listen to everything, not just what the radios want to play on. Uh, not good for record companies. Great we, for bands. Do we really care about the record companies? Should we care about the record companies? Um, should we, care, them, should mean, we care about the record companies? It's getting less and less... It's getting less and less that way, isn't it, really? Because, I mean, home recording and everything's getting so good now that that you don't really need a record company. To, you, need, you need promotion. Mm. I mean, even if you sort of like spread all over the internet or whatever, you're never going to get massive unless you get some big company promoting things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you need record companies for things like that. You but do you really need record companies to say, oh, you know, we've got this band and we're going to get them on the play radio playlist and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and going to spend 250 grand um, promoting them so everybody goes, wow, look at this band. You know, it's a big hype thing like they did with films. Mm. You know, it's a big, big, big hype sort of things that break films. And people go and see the film and they go, oh, it wasn't as good as they made it out to be. And a lot of the bands are like that, that the record companies will try and promote. You know, they're not all the same. It's just, you know, I generalise too much, but it's often the way. Yeah, Vic raised an uh, interesting point with the whole pirate radio thing, the fact that it's was just a way of getting everyone could get their music out there you just chuck it in and maybe they'd play it 
So I think it's the same thing that's happening with the internet now. You can just chuck it out into the ether it's and see just, if somebody wants yeah, it. It's just there, isn't it? it? You know, back back then you would have bought CDs or tapes or whatever and bootlegged them and shown them to your friends and sent the internet. You know, uh, I'm not for or against pirating music, but I mean, at, having it at your fingertips is. I, I think it's more positive to an artist than negative, personally. Maybe not so helpful to the industry, but whether the industry is going to continue being relevant within the next 10 years, I'm not sure. Well, I think it, it has to change if it wants to survive, because as our documentary is called, Death of an Industry, it's the whole idea of that the old way of running up music as a business isn't working. It cannot work. Just to create that, we are, we are too willing to just chuck up a torrent or something, and... I think that works because we can share music just so quickly and pe- pe- if people like a band they will support them in their own way. I, I totally agree. Um, you could merchandise or... Touring, you, just yeah, anything. Touring, you know, yeah. You just, you just support the artists if you like them, don't you? Well, well, you, st- you on st- that point though, if, if there was no industry behind it, who would pay for the touring to start? Who would pay for the touring? Well, that's the wonders of things like Kickstarter. Kickstarter, you just chuck your money in and then once they get a large amount of pot, that money goes through to whatever group is wanting to use it and they'll use it for what they Kickstarter is a brilliant platform yeah. say if a band didn't have the right money to tour in they'd start a Kickstarter uh, fund yeah. they'd get their fans to support them um, send them money say oh, can we have £10 donation if we get for enough people it's not even a donation no. it's just like it's uh, just you pay point. your ticket in advance and once enough people have bought their ticket they will then charge your money and it'll go to their account and then they play it's, it's and you just, get a ticket it's just contributing to the change it really is things like that yeah the old way of the industry operating isn't necessary as an, isn't necessary. It's, it's definitely not as relevant. I, f- I think within, I d- I'm not sure. I don't think it's, it's always going to be there. I think, but I think people, you know, even more <laughs> mainstream artists, they're going to jump on the bag wagon and realise that it's not as important the whole uh, label thing anymore. I think it's really dying out slowly. It's going to change, and I am personally looking forward for what it's going to become. Yeah. Slow pass.